either God is on the throne or I am. You have one theologian who was honest enough to say, I don't believe in the sovereignty of God, I believe in the sovereignty of man. That is the official terminology. I am the captain of my faith. Ah, you see. And the humanist manifesto, Schaefer railed against it. And that's one of the things we'll do in this class is we're going to go through the whole video series. How should we then live? I'm dealing with this Humanism now, says, I, myself, by myself, from myself, within myself, by my own reason, my own experience, my feelings, whatever, I can discover truth, morals, justice, and beauty without God. I can do it. <clears throat> In order to do that, see, there's only enough room, a beautiful illustration that Schaefer gave, one fire chat. He said, now, imagine that you were marooned on an island and nobody else was there. Well, as time went along, your clothes began to rot, so what if you just walked around naked? You didn't care. You didn't need clothes. Nobody else was there. And if you saw some fruit, what would you do? Take and eat it. Then another guy washed up on shore. And now there were two of you, two intelligent, sentient beings on the same island. And the first thing is, this, he says, man, get a bush, get a leaf, <laughs> something. Could you walk around naked? Or immediately was your freedom to do so hampered? Yeah. Yeah. What if you saw the same fruit and he saw the same fruit? One of you is going to get it. <laughs> so he said, in the island of the universe, there's only enough room for one free will. God does what he wants, where he wants, when he wants, why he wants. How he wants. There's only one free will in the universe, and it's God. And humanism is saying, God off the throne. Man is on the throne. Gordon Clark gave me this sitting in his living room. He said, the, the last time I was in a Billy Graham crusade, he had me up on the platform. He said, Bob, I'm telling you the truth. I was sitting there. That was the last time I had anything to do with Graham. He had given his invitation. The people came forward. And then he said this, at this point, not even God can help you. There's no use even to pray. You have to accept Jesus by your own power and choice. Not even God can interfere with it. Clark said, that's it. Now, think about that for a moment. Arminians say, God is a gentleman. See, there's a little theological. And he would never <laughs> violate your will. Well, thank God he violated my will. Amen. But I wouldn't be here tonight. <laughs> God is a gentleman, and he wouldn't violate our wills. Now, when these idiots say that, <laughs> I always go right for the throat, you know, like a vampire one, right for the tablet. I said, oh, so you don't believe in the inspiration or inerrancy of scripture? What? <laughs> Did God violate the wills of the authors of scripture so they were not permitted to put stupid stuff in there? Is the Bible without error because God did not allow them to write error. Now, this is why people like Clark Pinnock and others, when they finally came to the conclusion, I would rather 
have free will than God's will. They gave up the inerrancy of Scripture, the inspiration of Scripture. And I document that in my books. Once they accepted the humanist concept of free will, the Bible went in the trash can. Well, the Bible has contradictions, it has mistakes, it has it has the stupidity of the age. I mean, Moses actually believed that God created the universe in six days. Oh, 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 oh! <laughs> it was a stupid idea for stupid people, but we are enlightened in these days. <laughs> these are the people running our Bible colleges and seminaries and running around yep. Wheaton and all the rest. They really believe the Bible is a book of fairy tales, myths, well-meaning. Just don't take it you know, too literally. Whatever you do, don't follow its morality. Uh, if something feels good, then it is good. <laughs> Come on, baby. Like my fire. And you see, this is where we are today. 